one. We do want to bring in Niall Stanich now, White House columnist with The Hill, also News Nation contributor. It's good to see you in studio with us tonight. Um, let's talk about this. Penn's president has just resigned. We, we heard Ryan Bass sort of talking about the ripple effect. Do you expect we'll see anything similar from Harvard or MIT coming up? At the very least, it clearly ups the pressure on the presidents of those universities because, Natasha, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between the lines that they put forward at that congressional hearing. Then there was pressure to resign. Then some of them tried to clarify what they had said. But now that this uh, University of Pennsylvania president, Liz McGill, has resigned, obviously it speeds up the case that others should do the same. And talk about the case of Liz McGill, because she also tried to clarify some of her comments. Obviously not successful, or where did that land? So it wasn't really successful. I mean, she did later clarify that she does consider the call for genocide of Jewish people to constitute harassment, which seems like a statement of the obvious. Mm -hmm. Now, the earlier congressional hearing seemed to me to be more making a rather uh, finely uh, defined sort of constitutional law point about the difference between words and conduct and how that refers to the First Amendment. Those may be valid points from a legalistic perspective. They clearly didn't meet the moment. Talk about the president's being grilled by members of Congress this week. We heard these arguments that really focused on free speech mm -hmm. in the moment. Did that land? I think the, the questions were effective because they brought this issue to a head. Now, when some of the presidents were responding, it did get into this trying to distinguish between a expression of a political viewpoint, even though that viewpoint may be offensive, and what the presidents were terming bullying or harassment or intimidation aimed at one person or one group of people. That was the distinction that they were trying to draw, but obviously that came up very much against the clear call that they didn't respond to to condemn these words. At this point, what would the presidents of Harvard and MIT need to say in order to stem off something similar happening to them this weekend? I'm not sure that there is something that they could say because that congressional testimony was so dramatic. I mean, we have seen in, in the UPenn example, so the, uh, Ms. McGill tried to clarify and it was not terribly successful. So at this point, I think it has become almost emblematic of this larger debate about anti-Semitism in college campuses, whether enough has been done to stem it, and clearly critics say that okay. it's not. And Niall Stanich, I know you're going to stick with us for more political analysis later tonight. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.